Four years ago, Bane the Monster actually made a phenomenal post in relation to some of the material that I'm covering more recently on this channel, which would be the effects of sexual control, discipline, mitigating exhaustion in this arena, which would have significant, significant effects on DHT, testosterone, androgen receptor sensitivity, and dopamine as well. So I'm going to give all credit to Bane the Monster here, of course, but add in some of my color as well. This individual, similar to me, was diving into the possible explanations in biological terms behind the beneficial effects of long-term SR and celibacy. When you have better control in this area, better I mean, respect is a word you can certainly use interchangeably with relation to this God-given, I know people don't like that word, but let's just say the, the, the faculties of the universe that have blessed you with this ability to create, to create on a level which is unparalleled, we have to understand and make better utility of this, especially in the modern degeneracy. When you retain and abstain, your body responds and upregulates androgen receptors or AR and dopamine D2 receptors which in return make you more sensitive and receptive to that hormone which we are all seeking testosterone namely but also the neurotransmitter dopamine which means as you will understand in a moment that we have better what would you say sensitivity to novel pleasures in life I mean look most men can't experience the joys and the pleasures and the sensations and the, the, the satiating effect of going for a walk in the park, enjoying sunlight on the skin, enjoying good music. And interestingly enough, I know it's anecdotal, one of the things that many men experience when they go on this journey of abstinence is this notion that music sounds better. It is more satiating to the soul. And I think I'll keep with that word. There's a distinction here between joy and pleasure. And the distinction is this. I'm not saying pleasure is wrong, wrong, but pleasure is is fleeting. You get these very high peaks but very low valleys in relation to the experience of pleasure. But when you when you orientate yourself around joy, it is not as you know the, the peaks aren't as high, but it is more satiating. And the the analogy or the example that I would give that is a good equivalent to this is the difference between when you maybe eat fast food, again, there's a very peak uh, sensation of pleasure in your body that you're experiencing as a consequence of the synaptic clefts being full with dopamine. But those valleys, those morning afters, they are filled with a certain amount of regret and you come to a very low place in that valley. But when you eat a satiating meal, you know, maybe maybe some salmon, maybe a nice ribeye, maybe a nice uh, filet mignon, you know, whatever your personal preference is that is consistent and congruent with uh, health fundamentally, that's good for your body, that's good for the brain, it's, it's everlasting. You are more uh, content and you're, you're no longer feeling that chaser effect. So we keep going here. In reference to dopamine, dopamine and norepinephrine, is what causes you to feel motivated and energetic during this period of more sexual control. Testosterone and DHT, we'll discuss DHT as some of you uh, maybe weren't impressed with my <laughs> very cryptic post relating to how DHT is actually a, it is actually something that we should focus more on if we're looking to optimize masculine gene expression, do not get lost in the fact that testosterone is merely a means to an end. And I think I've made this point in contrary uh, in, in, in previous videos, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but testosterone is a system for masculine gene expression, right? When people say, oh, I want my testosterone to be a thousand nanograms per deciliter. Sure, that's a very nice round and whole number that may, maybe many men have never experienced in their life, but they means it to an end of more muscle growth. Maybe they mean it to an end of uh, better mood, um, better motivation, better and improved vigor in that regard to go after the things that you want in life. So, so again, and, and that is a multifactorial equation. We can't focus purely on testosterone if that's what we want. Again, don't get lost in the 
maya and minutia of solely chasing high testosterone levels, free based testosterone levels in the blood. Of course, they're going to be very, very resourceful and helpful, but it's part of a multifactorial equation. And other parts in that equation certainly involved dopamine sensitivity. They involve androgen receptor sensitivity as well. And I'm, I'm writing a book in this area that is more comprehensive of the holistic picture that is optimizing masculine gene expression, better endocrine health system, your hormone health system. We can't look at it through this very binary and very reductionist lens in relation to fundamentally, you know, what we want. And what we want is to fully optimize our masculine genes, you know, within that gene. Obviously, some people are going to be more blessed in this area, but, you know, we want to be we want to be reaping the rewards the best we can, getting the most out of what our mother and father have given us in terms of a, a profile in which to orientate and evolve our, our very lives. So in addicts, they too have a low amount of D2 dopamine receptors due to the amount of overstimulation they expose themselves to, which in response can make that person desensitized to the pleasure response over time. And again, I know we're talking perhaps in a more scientific vernacular here, and that's fine for those who, of you who understand it. In a more uh, laymanistic term, you can just see this as, am I experiencing novel pleasure through the simple things in life? Am I finding myself in a situation where I cannot even sit still and enjoy a, a movie with my significant other, with my wife, with my girlfriend, without having to reach for my phone and scroll and get more stimulation? It's in these small, very really small things in life whereby, you know, you know what's interesting and scary, terrifying, absolutely horrific, so nefarious in nature is the amount of posts, the prevalence of posts in which there are women who will post on Reddit, and I know this is all anecdotal, that their boyfriends are not, or their husbands are not satiated with the sexual relations with them and that they have to result to some kind of masturbation, some kind of adult material use, even after they've copulated, and they're feeling like they're no longer good enough. And it's the simple consequence of this kind of effect here that they are lacking this sensitivity to dopamine in novel things, like just having sex with your wife, just having sex with your wife is not good enough. And you never want to be putting yourself in a situation where you are liable to be vulnerable to that kind of phenomenon happening here and why this particular area of research should be prioritized which is what i'm trying to do on this channel here so if you're you know if you're if, if you find that valuable to your life then support me by subscribing by joining the patreon and uh and um you know together i believe that we we can expand the areas of research in sexual control in restraint in celibacy because sometimes it feels like it's something that um is easily easily laughed at but I'm firmly of the opinion that the state of society, the degeneracy of society, is a consequence of the individual. And if the individual relationships between man and woman are skewed because they cannot even be receptive to their wife's body, yeah, we're in trouble. We're in trouble here. So this happens even in the case of an increased uh, dopamine levels due to there not being enough receptors in the brain to receive it. And the fact that some of these receptors are absolutely fried because the dopamine's dopamine neurotransmitter the chemical is sitting in the synaptic cleft and it is not being and the clefts the receptors in the clefts they're, they're not binding they're not binding because there's too much so we lose our sensitivity repeating the cycle will eventually cause you to chase stronger and stronger stimuli in an attempt to replicate the high effect but when you abstain from overstimulating dopamine levels such as some of the very interesting paraphernalia here, which I'm sure some of you are very, very familiar with, hopefully not too familiar with, your brain in return becomes more receptive and sensitive to less stimulation by upregulating receptors, working, exercising, reading, and more. I mean, can you imagine it? Can you imagine that the reason why, I mean, it's not even imagination, I'm firmly of the opinion that we're talking about facts, not theories here, that the reason why you cannot even sit down in a chair and read for half an hour is because is because your D2 receptors have just been absolutely obliterated because of this very, very high stimulating material that is out there in the world today. 
uh, some of this mentioned here, but you know, more definitely. And imagine the increase of your quality of life. Imagine the increase in quality of your financial earnings in your quality in, in, in your relationship. If you're able to heal that aspect of your life, if, imagine if you can sit down for half an hour, read a book that you've been telling yourself, one day I'll read this book. One day I'll actually work on that side hustle, that business, because it's actually pleasurable because you're actually excreting dopamine in relation to that task. That is a real phenomenon that is happening right now at this very moment. It might be you watching this video right now, brother. It might be you. You're sitting there going, you could be onto something here. Then this is certainly an avenue that you should entertain. Sexual satiety, excess PMO, which stands for adult material use, masturbation and orgasm and explicit activity causes a decrease in androgen receptor sensitivity in their brain and upregulation of estrogen receptors. So I've made comprehensive videos on this subject. Uh, please go back and, and read them, but to cut a long story short, it's back to that multifactorial equation of how masculine gene expression works. It is not just a consequence of, oh, if I upregulate free based testosterone in my blood, therefore I will turn on masculine genes. No. We have to make sure that the receptors that are moving the testosterone molecule from the blood into the cell, where in, in the cytoplasm, which is where the androgen receptor lives, and the androgen receptor acts as a kind of like a like a gatekeeper. It takes takes testosterone, grab, pinches it out, and it moves it into the nucleus of the cell. If your ARs aren't receptive to testosterone because of sexual addiction, because of lack of sexual control, because of sexual fatigue, then it is no longer going to be able to make that move. So in, in, in many ways, it doesn't matter how much testosterone you have in the blood, if your ARs aren't receptive to it. So individuals that call this particular, you know, exercise cap, I mean, I'm firmly of the opinion that they only do so because they can't control themselves in this particular dimension, which, you know, no shame to them. But um, again, that's what I believe is their particular karma, their dharma at this time. The reason, the reason isn't as simple as that. It's also, are, is your body able to use and synthesize testosterone to the best of its ability? And it can only do that if your androgen receptors are sensitive to it. So we need to make sure that we are sensitizing ourselves to this particular aspect. And it also upregulates estrogen receptors as well. And cortisol equally combined to these points. This makes free-based testosterone levels less available in your blood because it does not have any receptors to attach to, as I've said. This makes testosterone less effective and not enough testosterone means there will be uh, not enough available to convert into DHT, which also has its fair share of benefits, androgenic and cognitive effects. So with DHT, look, the, the, um, the worry for many men is they may be experiencing male pattern baldness, maybe they're receding, Maybe they're getting that little, uh, the little, the little puck, the back of their head, a little, little shiny puck, and um, the consequence of that is usually, you know, usually has connotations with elevated DHT in your uh, blood. Now, they will be using a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, I believe is the term, which is an enzyme that actually converts testosterone into DHT. So they're trying to stop that process by taking something like finasteride, I believe it's called. Those of you who are maybe using that at the moment can let me know in the comments below um, how accurate that is. But DHT, DHT in and of itself is, is, you know what? The only reason that you're watching this video with a penis and testicles between your legs and not a vagina is because of DHT. It is a very, very powerful androgen and is responsible for the fact that in you know, in vitro, in the embryo that you developed as a man and, and not as a woman. It's a very, very powerful androgen. And if you're talking about masculine gene expression, we're, we're solely concentrated on that, then we'd be having a conversation more about DHT than testosterone, I can promise you that. And this is something, again, I'm gonna cover in my book a lot more comprehensively. But the point being is that DHT is far more potent and it's gonna yield you far more results in relation to, to testosterone. Testosterone gets a fancy, you know, rap because because it's well known. But DHT, DHT is the one you really you really want if you're fundamentally seeking to optimize masculine expression within the within the confines of your genes, let's say. So let's talk some practical uses. First and foremost, this particular video was in relation to the notion that 
Sexual discipline, control and mitigation of fatigue and exhaustion in this area is going to yield you more fruits in this area. Your brain, there's different parts in the brain that have androgen receptors, which again are going to express testosterone and masculine gene um, upregulation. And by the way, that has been studied. That is a scientific fact. The, stu the, the study was done on, um, on, on animals. I believe it was voles specifically. But again, there's continuity with animal studies and human beings as well. The voles were more sensitive to testosterone, to DHT, when they were not in a mating season, so to speak. And you can actually make a, fair, a, a, a fairly accurate analogy to the fact that with the prevalence of um, adult material online, you are signaling to the body that you're constantly in a mating season if you are engaging in that PMO cycle. So what are you telling the body? You're telling the body that, hey, I'm healthy, I'm reproducing with women because by the way, and this is the this is the killer fact that I've met, named many, many times, is that your nervous system, your brain cannot tell the difference between a virtual sexual experience and a, phys and a physical one. So if you're deceiving your body, if you're being malicious and nefarious and deceptive in nature to your body, that you are actually reproducing with all the women that you're watching virtually online, then it's gonna respond in the same way. And that is gonna be a decline in your masculine gene expression because part of masculine gene expression serves what purpose? To signal fertility to the female counterpart. Why would your body do that if you're already being successful with women? That's certainly something to meditate on. And then when you refrain, when you abstain, you start to upregulate masculine gene expression, AR receptors become more sensitive, dopamine comes back online, you are going to leverage the innate powers of, of, of being a man through heightened masculine gene expression, which has shown evidence in studies that during female ovulation is more sought after. The consequences are actually twofold. The, the, the first one is the one that I've just delineated here, which is simply put, men are not signaling that they are fertile, that they are vir virile. And the second point, which is, which is even more difficult, is that women aren't doing that either. You know why? Because they're all taking contraception, because they're all taking the pill. What does the pill do in very simplistic terms? It tells the body that it is already pregnant and therefore is not gonna go through ovulation. So men aren't showing they're fertile and women aren't showing they're fertile either. So what you do is you repress, not, not just, again, I know we're talking specifically about men, but men are, you know, through no fault of their own, through the, you know, the environment that we're in, they're, they're signaling that they're no longer fertile and can reproduce in that way because they're already reproducing. They're not tapping into the innate biological wing, wingman that would be accessible to them if they weren't in this constant mating cycle. And, and, women, and women are walking around signaling that, you know, they're, they're, they're pregnant. So you, you can't get pregnant again. So the body is definitely, again, not going to signal to the environment that it's going to be receptive to masculine gene expression. So even if, even if, and, and this might be, in my personal opinion, a theory why some men experience attraction and other men don't, or men experience subconscious, you know, pheromonal attraction in some kind of dimensions is because you have to have the combination both of you being, you having some kind of sexual restraint and also being in the environment with women who are not taking contraception. So yeah, that's uh, that's the kick of that. What do you think, gentlemen? Are these theories, are all these facts? If you find utility in this, please subscribe, stick around, and I'll bring you something else very, very soon. Take care.